Welcome to the NCN Nightly. I'm Nisha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. St. Lucians encouraged to never forget the price paid for their freedoms. A move to address a critical concern of the citrus subsector is underway, and more young people attain national vocational qualification certification. People around the world gather in November to pay tribute to the courageous souls that served nobly during the world wars. The observance of Remembrance Day in the Commonwealth realm is punctuated by the traditional military parade and subsequent formal ceremonies. On Sunday, November 10, St. Lucians were encouraged to never forget the price that was paid so we could enjoy the freedom that we do today. Some 359 St. Lucians were among the over 15,000 West Indians who were enlisted in the British Army to fight the First World War, where 36 died in action. Many more were enlisted in World War II, and 26 of those died in action. A handful of these veterans are still alive, including President of the Ex-Service League, Haynes Cyril, who turned 98 on November 11, 2019. Remembrance Day is one of the most important days in the year for the veterans of both world wars. It is the day we honor our young men and women who did not come back from the wars. We do this by wearing a red poppy, which is very important to us now. Acting Prime Minister Honorable Guy Joseph hopes that people everywhere will learn from past wars and will resolve to show greater love towards each other so peace can reign. The world is bent towards war in so many places today. Leaders make decisions sometimes that is causing people to be in conflict and in the mood of war when it is not really necessary. Our world is in turmoil. We do not know what is happening tomorrow. But the fact remains that as long as we are here, each one of us can contribute to the peace, the safety, and security of where we live. The British and French governments remain grateful for the service given by these men and women during the two world wars. We remember for peace. They were willing to sacrifice their tomorrow for our today. In doing so, <clears throat> excuse me, in doing so, they changed the world for better and for all. Their legacy is peace, freedom and democracy not theoretical concepts of interest only to academics or historians. They are instead the very building blocks of the societies in which we live, work and love. I am deeply convinced that we have a duty to remember, to remember in order to pay tribute to those who fought, were injured or died for us to be free to remember also to avoid history repeating itself. The more years go by, the more the new generations need to learn what happened those many, in those many dark moments of history. And they must pass on that knowledge to their descending relatives. Remembrance Day included the laying of ceremonial wreaths at the War Memorial at the Derek Walcott Square, the George V Park, and the Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery. The annual reunion of the St. Lucia branch of the Royal Commonwealth Ex-Service League took place at Government House. Move to address a critical concern of the citrus subsector is underway as research and development technicians in the Ministry of Agriculture hosted a training exercise for local citrus farmers and horticulturists. Amanda Faye Clark tells us more. 
This is Wang Long Bing, the yellow dragon disease or the citrus greening disease, as it's being called in Sinusha. It is one of the most serious citrus plant diseases, raging havoc on the citrus industries of the world. For local research and development officials, their focus is on equipping citrus farmers and horticulturists on the island with the technical skills to easily identify and manage the effect of the disease. Speaking at the closing ceremony for the Capacity Building and Management of Citrus Greening Training Workshop, the Deputy Director of Agriculture Services, Barry Innocent, says this week's exercise was a timely move to initiate long-term actions in protecting the citrus subsector. He has called on all certified trainees to immediately employ the strategies learned in the daily management of the farms and businesses. The knowledge transferred in this workshop in identification and management of citrus greening plus certification of citrus nurseries is a tool of power. It has left you not ignorant but armed with relevant information to make the difference or to make a difference. You can take the knowledge gained and do nothing with it or you can take the knowledge gained, apply it and make a difference. Eco representative to the Eastern Caribbean states, Greg Rawlins, says his organization is pleased with the success of this week's activity as stakeholders have been exposed to a number of relevant topics, including early detection, control and management, vector identification, and understanding the citrus greening disease cycle. One strategic move, he adds, was to engage the expertise of a citrus protection officer attached to the Ministry of Agriculture in Jamaica to facilitate the training. This, he explains, was appropriate to allow participants to not only learn the best management practices of citrus greening, but also to explore and anticipate what setbacks can occur when the protocol is not fully up. ICA stands ready to continue working with you. I hope this workshop is not just the, a one-off activity, but it's the beginning of what will be a continuous process of partnership, collaboration between the stakeholders here in St. Lucia, including the Ministry of Agriculture. We are going to be working very closely with Ms. Romain, Hannah Romain, who is the head of the Plant Protection Services so that we can build upon this activity and take it to the next level. Alfred Barrett, Crop Protection Officer at the Ministry of Agriculture in Jamaica and facilitator of the Citrus Greening Training Workshop says he applauds the dedication of the IECA and the Ministry of Agriculture in ensuring that the exercise address the concerns and possible challenges the local sector may face in putting together a program of learning activities that brought trainees face to face with the lessons. I believe that citrus greening is indeed one of the most devastating diseases of citrus, as I said. Um, and it, it is going to be a game changer. Those who are willing to change and adopt like that bird that he spoke about are going to survive. Those are the citrus industries that are going to exist. Anybody who's, who will continue to do what they are going to do, you have five to ten more years, and then you will be buying citrus from those who are like that bird who decide to change. The Ministry of Agriculture and the IECA will continue to work on safeguarding the local citrus industry, and as such, will take decisive actions to train stakeholders and augment the performance of citrus farmers. From the Ministry of Agriculture, this is Amanda Faye Clark. The Technical Education and Vocational Education and Training Unit recently held a presentation exercise at the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School for participants in National Vocational Qualification Certification Program at the school. Anissa Antoine reports. Through the Technical Vocational Education and Training Unit, students of the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School were rewarded for their hard work as restaurant service providers. Principal of the Castries Comprehensive Secondary School, Marva Daniel, expressed gratitude to the Technical Vocational Education and Training Unit, TVET, for providing this opportunity. The establishment of technical and vocational education and training is a fundamental part of our nation's attempt to build 
its people. And this curriculum at CCSS affords our students the opportunity to enhance productivity and of course to become more empowered, positioned and employable and obviously thus reducing most of the economic duress within the families, the communities and of course our country. Colbert Samuel, education officer at the TVET unit, encouraged students to continuously educate and certify themselves. You now are in a position that is unique in some ways. The world now is moving towards skills development because 75 or 80 percent of the jobs in the world require some skill. And only 75% of those jobs can be accessed because most of us are not skilled. If people talk about um, the skills gap and unemployment and stuff, but while they're saying that, a number of employers are telling you, yo, we have vacancies. But there is not, at this point, a close enough link between employment and training. And that's one of the things that we're moving to do at this particular point in time. The presentation to participants of the National Vocational Qualification Certification Program took place on Wednesday, November 6, 2019. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Do stay with us. One of the eight universally recognized rights of the consumer is the right to satisfaction of basic needs. This means that every consumer has the right to basic goods and services that guarantee survival. This right includes adequate food, clothing, shelter, healthcare, education, water, and sanitation. Welcome back. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline and LPG 20, 22 and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The retail price of kerosene and diesel remains unchanged. The price changes take effect from Monday, November 11, 2019. Gasoline decreased from $13.28 to $13.24. Diesel remains at $13.37 per gallon. Kerosene remains unchanged at $8.12 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder increased from $31.38 to $32.01. The 22-pound cylinder moved from $34.79 to $35.49. And the 100-pound cylinder is now... Patches of low-level moisture drifting along the easterly wind flow will cause a few cloudy periods and showers over the northern portion of the region during the next 24 hours. A weak tropical wave located a few hundred miles east of the Lesser Antilles is moving westward near 15 miles per hour or 24 kilometers per hour. This wave is expected to cause cloudiness, showers and possibly thunderstorms over the southern Windward Islands from Tuesday. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. Tides for Castries Harbour, high at 2.41 p.m., low at 9.11 p.m. Tides for Beaufort Bay, high at 3.48 p.m., low at 10.38 p.m. Seas, moderate to locally rough with waves and northeasterly to easterly swells, 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and rough seas. The sun will rise Tuesday at 6.02 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.